Hey guys, how's it going? Mike the Tech here. So, uh, last time in our tutorial series uh, for our top down shooter in Game Maker Studio 2, we went over alarms. And we're going to use those again in this case, but we're going to do something interesting. We're going to make enemies come out of a random spot on the top of our screen. And um, that's going to make it feel a lot more like a top down shooter. So, let's go ahead and get started. So, we're going to add a sprite. So, we'll go ahead and right click on sprites and go to create. And now we're going to import an image, and uh, we're going to import an image from the Kenny.nl sprite pack uh, called Space Shooter Redux. And uh, when you download that from Kenny.nl, you can go to PNG, the PNG folder, for portable network graphics, and go to the enemies folder. And we're just going to choose one of these. So I'm going to choose this green one right here, just because it looks pretty cool. And hit yes. Now let's not forget to name our sprite, so we'll name it SPR underscore enemy1. Perfect. Now, let's go ahead and center our point of origin, middle center. This is important because when we make it shoot, we want the bullets to come out of um, the center of the plane. We might be able to change this a little later, but we want to know where our point of origin is regardless um, so that we can make our bullets spawn at the right sp spots, even if we wanted them to spawn down here, for example. Uh, so now you've set the point of origin, so let's go ahead and go to our collision mask. And uh, right now it's a rectangle that goes around the whole thing. We don't need it pixel by pixel uh, collision detection, but we would like it pretty close. So let's go ahead and choose an ellipse. And that'll give us a nice circle around our enemy. That way, even if the player doesn't quite hit the enemy, it's still going to pretty much um, register a hit. But if you totally miss, it's like if it goes diagonally and doesn't hit here, it's not going to register a hit. So um, I think this is pretty forgiving. So we'll close this now. And we'll right click in our object section and create a new object. And this object is going to be for our enemy. So I'll name this obj underscore enemy1. And we'll assign it a sprite just like we had before. Sprite enemy1. And we're just going to create a step event. And all we're going to do at this point when an enemy gets spawned is uh, basically go like fly down so fly downward so we could jump to a point uh, let's find that it would be under movement and I forget what these look like jump to point here we go alright so our X axis is horizontal and our Y axis is uh, vertical so if we add to our vertical axis we'll be going down the screen because we start at zero at the top left so uh, we would be adding to it so let's go ahead and say 15 here just to make sure it works and uh, let's go ahead and go into our first room and just manually drag an enemy here and when we hit play uh, the enemy should go down the screen and um, uh, it's only going to be one enemy and it's going to go down the screen and it's going to disappear off the screen and nothing really is going to happen. We can't shoot it or anything yet, but we just want to make sure that visually it looks like it's going down the screen. And it's not. So uh, I realized what we did is this is a good lesson in, in iterative game design. It, it Sometimes it takes trial and error to get things to work. I didn't choose relative. So every step of the game it's jumping to uh, the Y position of 15 but the Y position of 15 is at the top of the screen, so it just keeps jumping there. I want it to be relative to wherever its current location is, so we want it to be Y plus 15. So we'll say relative, and then every frame of the game, it should jump down 15, uh, uh, 15 pixels. Uh, so at 60 frames a second, you can see how that would uh, make it look like it's scrolling pretty quickly and, and flying down the screen. And this is the same speed that we're using for our uh, main player controls as well. When you press W or up, the up arrow, I should say, or W, I'm not sure which one did, we did. Uh, yeah, see, so now the plane scrolls down, the enemy scrolls down. And if we use the up arrow, we're going up at 15. And down arrow, it's going down at 15, so that's the same speed that the plane's going. I think it was a little too fast, in my opinion. It doesn't give you much of a chance to fly after the plane. Or fly below it to shoot it down, you know. For uh, so, I'm gonna go ahead and change this to 7.5. That way, it slows it down a little bit because we don't need it to jump um, quite that quickly. So now that we have an enemy, we're not gonna make him shoot or anything crazy like that. We're gonna leave it pretty basic because I want to show you guys a trick on how to make them um, look a little more dynamic when they're when they're coming out of the screen. 
So we're go we'll we'll go ahead and go and create a new object, and we're going to call this obj underscore control underscore level one. And what this is going to do is it's going to control the enemies on level one. So uh, what we can do is we will add an alarm like we talked about in the last episode. We'll choose alarm zero in this case, and um, we want it to spawn an enemy every time this alarm hits. So let's look for create instance, which is right here. And we're going to look for our enemy object, which is right here. Now, where would we like it to spawn? Well, for the horizontal axis, we want it to um, show up at a random spot between the left and the right side of the screen. Uh, so what we could do is uh, we can actually use a function here and say random and we'll see two functions we could use. We could use random, which is a number between zero and whatever x happens to be. Or we can use random range, which is a number between um, uh, the first number and the second number. So if I say 200 and 500, it'll never be 150. It's always going to be between 200 and 500. So I'm going to use random range in this case, and I'll show you why in a second. So the first number I want is on the left side of my screen. Now I don't want an enemy to come up on the like specific zero pixel because then it's going to be too far left and I'm not really going to be able to shoot that enemy. So I want um, the enemies only to come between at least 100 pixels from the left side of the screen and 100 pixels from the right side of the screen. That way there's always kind of a cushion on the left and right and there's always a way for the player to get to those enemies when they're created. So the first uh, number I'm going to use is 100 because 100 on the x-axis is 100 from the left side. Now the second number I'm going to use is uh, kind of an interesting uh, idea here. I'm going to use the room width, so room underscore width, and I'm going to subtract 100 from that. So if the room width is uh, 1920, for example, then it would be 1820 um, as the second number. So that's fine here. It'll create a random range between those two points. And for the y-axis, we actually want it to show up above the screen. So uh, we want it to be not at zero um, and just pop in because then we'd see the, the sprite um, draw to the screen. But we want it to show up above the screen so we don't see it and then it just kind of flies in. So we're going to put negative 100 here so it at least shows up 100 pixels above the screen. Perfect. But nothing is calling this alarm just yet. So we'll go ahead and add a create event and say, um, let's find our alarm. Oops, don't freeze. OK, great. <laughs> so uh, Game Maker Studio 2 almost froze there for me. So let's go ahead. And that's a good uh, reminder to save. Uh, let's go ahead and set an alarm countdown and we want it to be alarm zero which it's already set to because that's where we put all of our code in and our countdown let's say every two seconds i want an enemy to show up so since our game is 60 frames a second that would mean 60 times 2 is 120. so in 120 frames uh set this instance off so it's going to create an instance right or set this alarm off and it'll create an instance but that's only going to happen once. So what we can actually do is we can go back in here and set another alarm countdown for 120. That way, every time the alarm runs, it also resets the countdown. So uh, let's go ahead and go into our room and let's drag, let's delete the enemy first because we don't need that in there anymore. We have a dynamic way now. <laughs> so let's go ahead and drag our object control level one up to the top left corner of the screen so we know where to find it just around right there and uh, let's go ahead and hit play and see what happens and what should happen is every two seconds a new enemy plane is going to spawn above the, uh, above the screen out of camera view and is going to fly down out of the screen and we're just going to make sure that that works so there's one plane and then one Two. There's another plane, and they're also going at the slightly slower speed of uh, 7.5, so that 
As you can see, I could fly a little faster than them and I could kind of maneuver around them. Uh, right now, they don't have any scripts attached to them, so we could just kind of fly over them right now. But we can add those later. Now, uh, just one more thing before we finish uh, with these enemies. There is uh, a little bit of cleanup we have to do. Uh, when these ships fly off the screen, they're going to keep on going forever. And that's going to kind of slow down our game if we have thousands of ships eventually going across, especially for long play sessions. So we always want to uh, destroy instances that aren't in use. So in our step event, we can actually do it here as well. We can uh, create an if statement, and we'll say uh, if variable. Okay, and we will say if y is greater than room height plus 100, oops, then destroy instance. And that means that once the enemy is 100 pixels below the room height, Excuse me. Once the enemy is 100 pixels below the room height and effectively off the screen, uh, go ahead and destroy that enemy. Uh, it won't give the player uh, any extra score or anything like that. It's just destroying the instance because it's no longer in view. Uh, let's go ahead and play that just to make sure that all the code is still sanitary and nothing is going to mess up on us here. Perfect, so now we're flying around. We didn't get any errors. We have enemies still showing up at our semi-random locations above the screen. And uh, hopefully they're destroying themselves once they reach the end of the screen. I'm sure they are. Alrighty, uh, let's go ahead and get this closed and move on to our next uh, tutorial. So thanks for watching and have a good day. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And uh, I try to read all of them and, and mold my tutorials based on, on what kind of questions and comments I get. So feel free. Uh, so thank you very much. Have a good day. Peace.